Howdy! So it's been a while, and I wanted to do a uh, quick update on stuff that's going on with the Ribbit 65. Um, first of all, you may have noticed that um, there is a new, uh, like, logo-y thing. So, um, the, um, it, it's not that exciting, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's the... Uh, the Ribbit 65 kind of logo-y thingy, and you may notice an odd banding of colors uh, underneath. And um, uh, in the comments, um, tell me what you think those colors are all about. I'd be curious to see if anybody, like, can make sense of it. Um, so, boards. I got boards in. Um, and let's see. I have to make some sense of what's going on here because it's a complete disaster. Um, so boards, yeah, uh, camera two, very exciting. So um, this is the uh, Rev 0 0.2 of the Core Plus board, which uh, I almost immediately built up. And what you may notice, uh, the keen eagle-eyed among you, is uh, blinking lights are working which is terribly exciting for those of you who enjoy the blinking lights. Um, and the, the lights themselves, well, it might actually be easier to show you on here, if it will focus. So power reset clock, um, bus right. So that's, you know, uh, read not write. Uh, IRQ, NMI, vector pull, um, ML sync, and then uh, chip selects and um, output enables for the RAM and ROM. Um, so that's that, and it works, and that's very exciting. Um, other boards that have arrived include this little baby here and of course there is just no way to win with this is there um there we go so this is the uh mini itx mezzanine board um i the jury's still out i've been thinking about whether or not i want to do um like plcc chips for the mini itx board um I may end up going that route. I'm not sure. But um, as it is right now, I, I want to do at least a proof of concept slash intermediate mini ITX board and use all the dip chips. And so I'm going to need some more space on the base board. So I figured I'd move the CPU, the ROM, the RAM, and the uh, address decoding up to a mezzanine board. And that's what this is. This is Rev 0.1 of that mez board um i have assembled it and it is sort of working and sort of not so this is the assembled version and um as you can see it's rev zero one test one and uh i have some debugging that i have to do on this i'm probably going to have to make a um uh, a no-op generator and I've thought, well, you know, I could just do it on an EEPROM. But then I thought, you know what I really should do is do a surface mount board that would fit in the EEPROM socket that has, um, you know, the pull-ups and pull-downs for the data lines to make the no-op um, on the data bus, but then also has the um, LEDs and uh, load resistors for the address lines and so all that would be contained hopefully in a package the size of a dip 28 um hopefully an interesting first pass at doing surface mount stuff um but again this one doesn't work yet uh debugging is in progress and the other one i wanted to show you was this so this is um an atx uh switcher 
and like breakout board. Um, so over here is a, I haven't obviously stuffed it yet, but uh, this takes a five watt or five, five ohm, 10 watt load resistor um, because you need to have a load on the plus five volts on an ATX power supply. Um, this is a right angle 24 pin connector. Um, this is a triple five circuit for taking a momentary and turning it into a latch. Um, this is a, a power transistor to turn on, turn off the, um, the, the on off signal to the uh, ATX power supply. Um, a, a local power switch button, a remote power switch button, and um, LEDs for the state of the power supply, because there's three different things that you can monitor. Um, standby, power OK, and plus 5 volts DC. And uh, the 3, 5, and 12 volt rails are all broken out um, into pin headers, or you can do whatever you want. And um, the grounds are here. So again, I haven't stuffed this yet, but that's... Uh, that is on, I have all the parts, I think. So um, that's an adventure that's coming up. And I am not going to be showing you the Rev 0.2 of the system IO board because it's junk. Yeah, that was 40 bucks down the tubes. Basically what, what it boiled down to is I had, um, I had done the fixes for the serial ports on the schematic but apparently I got distracted or something. I walked away and I never came back and fixed the PCB layout. So that's problematic. Um, so I have since fixed the PCB layouts and uh, layout singular. And um, next thing I send off to JLC PCB, um, that will be in that order. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do a special order for that. Um, my hope is that this will be the last um, prototype rev of the system I.O. board. So that's all very exciting. And um, so as far as the Ribbit 65 itself goes, um, here's a couple of things. I have um, I've been struggling with form factor for like the bench top version of the Ribbit 65 and it's been making me sad and um you know I had the I think the last update you saw probably the um at least as, as far as videos go the um the core plus was sitting on top directly on top with a piece of cardboard in between of the um system IO I got a little bit <laughs> I guess you could say crafty. Where did they go? Well, <clears throat> they up and vanished. Um, but anyway, this is the this is the display, and it's disembodied now. <laughs> it's on a it's on a little wiring harness. Um, but this is a, a stand that I did for the Rivet sixty five. Um, this is just like slot construction cardboard. Let's see, maybe I can get you a better angle. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. So it's, you know, slot construction cardboard. These are uprights that support the, the core plus board. And then underneath down here is the system IO board. And um, the ribbon cable just kind of wraps around the back. And then over here, I don't know if you can. So that is a Raspberry Pi Zero W on a Pi Sugar Pro um, battery pack. And there's a USB hub that comes off and goes, comes off here and goes around the back. Maybe I can show that. <laughs> All right, getting a little, getting a little crazy. So the USB hub is right, right down 
there. Um, and that USB hub has the, um, uh, the USB to serial uh, cables that go into the Ribbit 65. Right now, there are two serial ports being used. Um, I don't know if you can see in there. Yeah, so that those are the, the first two uh, general purpose serials. And then under the ribbon cable there is the console port. And um, so the console port and the first general purpose serial port are going to the Raspberry Pi Zero W. And um, the other serial port goes to the printer. Hurrah. So I also have I also have a, um, a mini pro um, you know EEPROM programmer hooked up to the um, Raspberry Pi Zero W. So I can basically do all of my Rivet 65 maintenance um, from here. And this whole thing is on a cardboard deck. Jesus, can I zoom out at all? I can't. So this whole thing is on a cardboard deck um, that I can move in one piece. So the printer is there. Oh my god, it's like a 60s Batman episode. And uh, the Ribbit 65 is here, and I can just pick this whole thing up and move it in one go. So that is very exciting. Um, and then there's this lid, which, as with everything else, is terribly exciting, that I can put things on if I need to, like the character display. The character display was difficult to, to read and especially to video where it was. Um, so as you can see, hello, Ribbit 65, our 65 monitor, um, with blinking lights. We're definitely out of the safe zone here, but and that's the best I can do with camera angles for this. So what else is going on? Well, I'll tell you what else is going on. Um, I had, there's a, the 6502 CPU family a page on Facebook. Uh, I'm a member of that. And um, I had mentioned some stuff about the Ribbit 65 on there. And some people had chimed in saying, hey, um, are you going to be doing a disassembler? I was like, ah, you yeah. mm. I, I, I want to stand up some basic functionality first, you know, get the monitor working and things like that. And um, so now that the monitor is working, um, like debugging code on the machine would be a lot easier with a disassembler, um, it occurs to me. Um, sometimes I'm not so bright and these things don't occur to me as quickly as they occur to other people. But um, anyway... So, I've written a disassembler. It's very exciting. Um, it's now in the core ROM, but it's in the pageable part of the ROM at the moment. Um, that's like the scratch space for stuff. Like, that's the testing environment, I guess you might call it. Um, so, yeah, let me give you a quick demo. Okay, so as you can see here, um, the character display says Ribbit 65. R65 monitor, the blinking lights are kind of at rest, and uh, we have a console here. And I'm, the this terminal window is connected to that Raspi Zero W. This window in screen is the the console of the Rubit 65. This one is the other serial port that's connected to the. Raspi Zero W, and this is where the output from the disassembler is going to go uh, first time through. And I'm going to confirm that by doing I00C04. Okay, so that is IO device 4, which is the first general purpose uh, serial port. 
um, on the Rivet 65. So, um, the, what was I doing before? I was doing 80, uh, 8100, let's see. Um, if I do P, 0, 0, 0, 0, this gets me a page dump of 0 page. Okay. And 0, 0, B, 0 is the start vector. Um, 0, 0, B, 1 I'm sorry, 00B2 is the end vector. So this is going to do a disassemble on um, addresses zero, uh, 8100 to 814E. Okay? And the disassembler lives at 8700 hex. So if I say R8700, uh, watch the little, little picture in picture there. You're going to see. It's a crapdasm, and the blinking lights are hopefully going to show something. Okay. Um, and then if I go over here, and that is the disassemble. Um, and I've confirmed with the... Um, with the list output from VASM. So VASM is the assembler that I use uh, for my 6502 work. I've confirmed with the output from the list output from VASM that um, this is correct. Um, so that's exciting. If we want to actually watch the serial in action, we can just run it again. Uh, R8700 and enter. And that's wonderful. So, the next thing I want to do is I want to do a change. Now, the, the disassembler is using the CIOH, the Common Input Output Handler, right? So, by simply doing a deposit, 0, 0, C0, zero, zero, 5... So that's changing which serial port that the output is going to go to. And it it's it gives me a sad <laughs> that I have arranged things the way that I have arranged them because this is terrible. Um but hopefully while it's not straight you can at least see it. So now if I do um, R8700, and that's your disassemble. So isn't that just bee's knees? Now, there's some stuff that the disassembler... Uh, I, I need to work on with the disassembler. One of them is the fact that uh, not everything in an address range is going to be recognizable as opcodes, right? Um, and so right now, it's not handling that very well. <laughs> It's, it's actually uh, not advancing as it should. Um, it just gets to an address that it doesn't recognize the opcode and just sits there in an infinite loop, which is bad. Um, it requires a, a warm start to get out of that. So that's something that needs to be addressed. But um, I think apart from that, it's, it's not too bad. Um, there's some stuff that I can do to clean the code up, streamline it a little bit, but as it is right now, the, the operational code of the disassembler fits in less than 512 bytes. The lookup tables for the opcodes, the, um, 
mnemonics and the lengths of the app codes because of the addressing modes and stuff uh, is three pages. So it's 768 bytes. Um, 512 plus 256. Yeah, 768. So um, it fits in less than five pages that's not too bad um it doesn't use a whole lot of and of course it's it's making use of cioh so you kind of have to have cioh on board to to do the the input output stuff um but it's written in such a way that you could kind of port it over somewhere else um so that's kind of cool um but anyway that's that's the updates i don't really have anything uh else do i nothing new in software other than the um the the disassembler um yeah i think that's it and nothing new on hardware yet so i will um i think i'll end it here um if you have any questions or comments leave them in the thing below um oh Here's the thing. Um, I revived my uh, Blogspot blog. So if, uh, if you're interested in detailed updates um, and uh, some of the code and stuff like that, um, I'm going to be posting. Um, I, I've already started, but I'm going to continue posting like long form updates articles on um ribbitnerding.blogspot.com and ribbit nerding spelt the normal way like with the n3 uh and the three b's so check that out if you're interested um and as always there's the 6502 cpu family page on facebook uh there's the ribbit nerding page on facebook and this the ribbit nerding um youtube channel so check back again soon for further updates uh happy holidays if that's your thing and um i i hope to uh hear from you soon and i'll try to get back to you with some more updates um in a reasonable length of time i don't know exactly how long uh like comment share subscribe if uh if you think i'm worth it and uh, we'll catch you later. Thanks.